Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting. I'm Arai Sapar, motherfucking D. Bazaar, coming to you from San Jose, California, on the west side of California, north, south, east, west, one nation, one country, one love, one, one family. And uh, this, is a, this is a lecture on what I call game or die. Game is very specific. It's how to attract a woman, period. Now, do women have game? They do, but I don't need to teach it to them because all you got to do is show some titties and some ass and you're okay. Let me change my name properly. The right person needs to speak. There we go. Okay. Now, um, first and foremost, I'm an entertainer. Everything I say is entertainment. Don't take anything seriously. Number two, be adult to watch this and don't break the laws of the country that you're in. Very important. Okay. Outside of that, only what you want to do. Let's get started with game or die. Listen, the first thing we must recognize is that one of the most important decisions you will ever make in your life one of the most important decisions that you will ever make in your life is who you decide to call your mate. Think about it for a second. Think about how important this one fucking choice is. You're about to take a woman or a man and say, I'm going to be with you from now on and I'm going to invest I'm going to invest my life in you. And I hope you don't hurt me. <laughs> okay. And you also say that I have seen everybody fail before me, but for some, Jesus, man, come on. Instagram. See, that's why you don't want to be on Instagram. Just follow my phone. I've seen everybody before me fail at this thing. Chances of you and I succeeding are almost zero but I'm willing to give it a fucking try. And I'm going to trust you. I'm going to introduce you to my friends and family. I'm gonna invest in you. I'm gonna live with you. My God, you just get crazier as time goes forward, right? Some of you even go as far as, I'm gonna have a baby with you. And yet, and yet this subject of being with another person, a man or a woman, is not due to the importance of it that we just looked at is not given its proper context in life it's looked upon as a side activity to your living the side activity to your life is your relationship i don't think so i think the main activity of your life if you're a woman is a relationship and it should be one because without it you ain't gonna make it I don't care how independent you are. You're miserable. And as a man, it's the second most important thing in your life after your career. Your career comes first. What about a woman? No. To a woman, the man comes first. And I'll say that to the last day. And I'll prove it on Oprah. Okay? I'll bring my logic. You bring yours. If you want to get emotional, I get more emotional. So that doesn't work. Okay? A woman, primary purpose is a relationship with a guy. The guy's primary purpose is his job, career. Second is the woman. Okay, facts. But it's still number two on the list of a billion things in your life as a man. It's the number one thought, but it shouldn't be the number one priority. Okay? And for women, it's the number one priority on your list. No matter what you got going on, you need a relationship. You need a good relationship, right? To start to feel secure, confident, feel like your worth is something. Okay? my work doesn't have to do with what any man thinks. Okay, ho, I've been watching your Instagrams. That's what it looks like. It looks like you don't care what men think when you put pictures like that, right? That's what it looks like. When you go out and you, you act like a whore, you don't care what men think, right? It's obvious. It's so obvious by the way you act. You don't even have to say a word, bitch. All you do is worry about what men think. You just like to say you don't care about what men, men think because you fail. You fail miserably dealing with men. And there's a reason for that. You see, it's the most important subject to a woman and she takes no time to study it. <laughs> Here is the most important topic on the planet for a woman and she doesn't spend one minute studying it. Studying it, not reading the back of a magazine about it. There's a difference. Also, she doesn't value getting better at it. Like, she starts somewhere and that's her level of relationship. 
Like you have to evolve and grow in a relationship, okay? So the man, on the other hand, some men, more and more in modern times, study the mating ritual. They study women. They know it's important, okay? But what they don't do, which is I'm here to correct or point out, you have to correct it. What they don't do is they don't put it in its proper importance. You guys, you guys that say to me, well, you know, I got to raise some money to learn from you or, um, yeah, but I, you know, I got to work. Like you don't understand actually that you're about to lose everything you have over a woman. Okay. Let's acknowledge the videos. Stan is there. Terrence is there. Cameron McGriff is there. Saul is there. Alex Thorshian is there. Adam is there. Danielle looking hot, showing us her neck. Alejandro's there and Cortez is there. Everybody else, no video. You're welcome. Think about it for just a second. This is one of the most important choices of your life. It'll make or break your, your life, the, the person you choose to be with. Okay? And yet it's treated like it should be a, a hobby subject. This is the subject of all subjects every university should run. There should be two subjects in the university. One, your career. Two, women. Those are the two things you need in life, my friends. What are you trying to do in life? Study that, and you need to know women. Because in the back of a man's mind, there's always a woman. You guys got to know this. Okay? I have a friend of mine who um, lives a pretty hermit kind of life. Does, doesn't talk to people very much, keeps to himself. Clean, he's not dirty. And uh, he had a divorce a couple years ago. And he seems really unaffected by women. Right? It just doesn't seem to give a shit. But then that's in conversation. Until I see a woman show up where we are and I see him react to her, then I realize that it's only okay until a woman shows up. You see? So that's part of also the reason I bet you he's a hermit. Is that if he goes out, he has to confront all the women. And it's easier to just, I don't care. Right? It's a fucking heavy subject. So I want you to know, I give it the proper importance in my life. I consider it to be one of the most important things I've ever done in my life, and I'm still doing it, understanding the dynamic of man and woman. And I think we could have world peace once we understand this, okay? But we get very close to it. So, today, so in Game or Die, that's why it's named like that, it's, it's heavy. It's not approached as a light subject. You approach it as like a university professor would, okay? Oh, my God. Hold on. Yeah, my body. Okay. Fuck. Okay. So first thing we must do is empty our cup. Empty your cup comes from a story of a samurai that went to go see a Zen master. And he asked the Zen master the secret to enlightenment for sword fighting. And the Zen master said, sure, have some tea. He sits down, he pours some tea for the guy and... The cup goes to the top and he keeps pouring and pouring and pouring. The samurai's watching. It's overflowing. Finally, the samurai's like, stop, stop, stop. He keeps going. He goes, stop. The cup can't take anymore. Can't you see it? And the man stops. The master stops and says, just like this cup, you're already coming to me full of ideas of what you think you know. First, empty your cup so I could fill it with the information you want. So the first thing we have to do when we approach this subject, we, you have to empty your cup because, because you've been taught incorrectly. Okay. I guarantee there's not one man watching me that wouldn't want to switch positions with me when it comes to women. It's just, I know this, you know what I mean? It's a fact. What you think you know about it is not as good as what it actually is. You have to, you have to imagine what it's like to have sex with those women. I have sex with those women. There's a difference. See that? You have to imagine what it's like if they love you, they love me. There's a difference in the actual experience. Like you could imagine drinking water and you could also imagine going on an airplane. You can imagine skydiving, but when you go skydiving, you feel different. You can imagine being in a boxing ring, but get in the fucking boxing ring. Let me show you the difference, right? right? It's a totally different, the word is not the experience. A1 Fitness, baby, I'm in Fairmont, downtown San Jose, okay? Come, come chill right here. Right there, I have another hour and then I gotta do yoga. If you wanna come to yoga with me, you should come to yoga with me. Okay. <sighs> then don't say you're going to come and then not come. Just don't say it. How can they be okay? 
with sharing. My friend who's so fine says, how can, she's a woman, how can they be, how can they be okay with sharing? Ha! Huh. That question is a question of a woman who hasn't been with a man yet. Okay? So my beautiful friend right there is a virgin. She's a virgin. She's beautiful. She's one of the most beautiful girls I know, and I know a lot of beautiful girls. But she's a fucking virgin. The question is a virgin question. It's a young, young female who's never been with a man who wonders what it's like to be with a man. Here's what I heard. What's it like to be with a man? Well, the answer is very, very simple. How are they okay with sharing? Well, what are they sharing? If you, are a, if you are in a country and there's a king, you all share the king, but you don't own the king. There's a big difference, okay? You could say everybody in a country shares a king, but nobody owns the king. The question of how are my girlfriends okay with sharing is I'm a king and it's easy to share a king, but you can't own a king. What did you say? You and your time. What does that mean? Get over here. Me and my time, the fact that you say you're gonna be somewhere and you can't make it there. No, it's you and your time, not me. It's you and your time. I'm fine with my time. You and your time. She can't fucking make it in time. You have no idea. This chick and I have known each other for years. And the amount of times we've hung out, I think it's maybe three. And we've tried like 3,000. She's failed 2,997 times. You and your time, baby. Okay. So you see, when I hear those words, how are they okay with sharing? What I hear is a virgin talking. And what you may hear as a man, when a woman asks you, then you may panic or worry and not know how to answer it. Okay. That was one way answered. I could answer it a thousand ways and they'd all be correct, actually. You know why they'd all be correct? Because the question is wrong. The question is wrong. The proper question is, how can I be okay with sharing you? That question would be answered here. You see that? But how is somebody else okay sharing me? How the fuck do I answer that one? I have to say, you have a beautiful heart. That has to be why. So she thinks, my friend here thinks, and again, I'm, I'm gonna emphasize how fine she is. Uh, Renee, can you please come by or what? What are you doing? What are you doing that's so fucking important that you're watching me right now? Wherever you are, you're watching me. Get your ass over here so everybody see how fine you are. She says, because you have a beautiful heart, that must be why. Now I'm gonna tell you something. No, that's why you will share me. You guys are learning game right now. This is game. So she told me why she would share me, my big, beautiful heart. Do you get that? Because she has to put her model onto what's going on and find an answer. Now, you and I need to know how important it is to this beautiful woman that you have a beautiful heart. You see that? That's seduction. I'm not going to impress her with money. I am, but not really. I'm not gonna impress her with tattoos, this and that, but my beautiful heart is something that would allow her to have other women around and feel secure still. This is good shit. So the first thing you must do is you must empty your cup. Then we can fill it in. The fact of the matter is the world is very unsuccessful at large at mating, men and women, women worse than men. And we can do something about it because I'm pretty successful at mating. Now this doesn't make the pain go away. Maybe in the future, I figure out a way out of that. But right now, the pain is real. It's some real shit going on, okay? And if you have had your heart broken by one, by three or four, it's very, very much intense, more intense, right? So we start from the beginning and we look at this dynamic of man and woman and we have to establish that we don't know anything. We have to start from somewhere, right? We start somewhere and we wanna start with the most basic thing. The most basic thing is that life, whoever the author is, if there's a computer program being run, if there's a God, if there's a mathematics of evolution, whatever the fuck you wanna think, whoever or whatever started this game decided it will continue 
and it must continue through sex between a man and a woman. That's a fact you could check. If sex between man and woman stopped, male and female, the, the planet's game would stop. What do you say now, Renee? What grabbed my attention was your being open to spirituality. Renee, you want to have a fucking conversation on Instagram, baby, or you want to come here? Okay. I'm not open to spirituality. I am spirituality. You're open to spirituality. Oh. Okay. Let's go. All right. Reposition. We start with the basic first, first idea. That must be the idea under all ideas, which is life without you and I, God or Buddha or whatever the fuck you believe in, decided that this game must continue through what? The dynamic sexual interaction, not just you talking to a chick, not kissing or hugging, the dynamic sexual attraction of man and woman continues this game forward. You could learn from me also, you know. Well, then get your ass over here and teach me. Don't talk about it, be about it. You see, I could learn from you, Renee, but you are learning from me right now. That's the difference, right? You, I could learn from you, but you've taught me nothing so far. Besides that I have a lot of patience with the girls that I think are pretty. That's it. But you didn't teach me that. I learned that dealing with you. Okay? Now, if you want to teach me, come over here and teach me. Which is not going to happen on Instagram. Okay. When you're watching this interaction, this is the diamond mind interaction. It's chopping communication. It's what I taught in my mentorship today. If you're in my mentorship class, I think Christian D may have been, this is what I was showing you when the words enter the planet and they get chopped up and they grow brr, pa, boom, boom, psh. Doesn't even reach. Okay, we're starting to get it. A little bit different, it's a different world, we're in a different universe. Whoever or whatever started this thing said that life shall continue by man and woman having sex. Sex, not talking, not holding hands. Man and woman having sex, this game must continue. Now in order for them to have sex, they must find each other desirable to have sex with. Right there becomes the beginning of the code of life when it comes to fucking and mating. This is my game. This is why I could have any woman I want. Any woman I want. If she hears me talk, I could have her. I don't care what she says. It's my decision to have her or not. She can say she would never, she would never, she would never until I decide. And then I will get her. I've proven it 100 times out of 100 times. And I'll prove it 1,000 out of 1,000 and a million out of a million. Because the code is the code. Just like gravity, this code activated makes a woman fall in love with me. That's it. You've seen it. So I could answer the question of how are they okay with is because I've activated nature. And nature doesn't have a problem if the male lion has 10 or 30 lionesses. In fact, um, a pride of 30 lionesses will rule the fucking jungle versus one male and one female lion. How pathetic. How, what, which lion is that weak? Which wolf pack is that weak? Alpha wolf with one alpha female, right? You're not even alpha. You're a lone wolf, pretty much. The bitch is leaving you for, for one of the pack, dog. What about a gorilla? Have you ever seen a gorilla, right? Him and his little gorilla troop, and it's him and some one bitch, and they're walking around. You know they're going to be fighting each other in about four hours. Why? That's the only other fucking bitch around, and that's the only other dude around. He's like, I'm a silverback. All the other silverbacks laugh. And what does the bitch do? She'll go to the gorilla with the most fucking bitches. Now, what does the woman, what does the woman animal do in human? The human animal is also a herd animal. I just gave you lions, wolves, and chimpanzees. What we have in common as a species is we also congregate in groups with hierarchies, just like those animals, right? And just like them, our male, alpha males have more than one woman. And just like them, other women who are worthy of that alpha male will leave their one man for that alpha male with four or five females. Look at my life and I'll continue proving it. Like, how could anybody argue with what I'm saying? And nobody can. And this is why you need to buy my shit because this is the truth you get. You're getting this shit for free right now. 
You know what that's like? That's like I just went and I hunted a buffalo and I'm sharing the food. And you had to do nothing but show up and eat. Literally, the rules of the jungle. But I didn't hunt a buffalo. I'm hunting a dinosaur. You've never even seen a meal that big. And everybody's excited. Everybody's excited to eat. Good. Don't forget the power that brought down the Tyrannosaurus Rex. That one's invisible. Because don't think you're going to be able to do it or anybody you know, that's for sure. Not what I'm doing. Not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is what I'm, nobody can do. And this is a fact. They have to prove results, not just talk about it. I'll prove it every day. Prove it every day. I got to check my text. Excuse me. A bunch of texts came through. Speaking of. Look at that. No. No. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's continue. So, gentlemen, ladies, I have an answer for you. And the answer is this. Nature has provided the herd animal, the one with alpha males and females in them, groups of animals that, that, that are pack, pack, not are pack animals, has has written the code in nature. And you have to ask yourself, is man as an animal, I know we are also consciousness higher than others, obvious in the fact that I'm speaking to you through a computer, giving you concepts that no animal on the planet could understand, lets you know that we are much greater. Simple, that's all there is to it, okay? That's a fact. But we do have an animal body, don't we? We do. So you need to first take a look at the animal body that you're equipped with and go, what are the rules of this animal body? Like exercise, eat certain kind of food, these things are, hold on. Sorry, Instagram, I have to keep, just click the link right there because I have to keep checking these messages. Okay, these are emergency messages. Okay, click the link right there and arrive here. Jesus, man. All right, we're good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we have to look at our animal body first. Now you may have heard these words, attraction is not a choice. You may have heard it, you may have not heard it, hear it now. And we're gonna look at the truth of it. Attraction is not a choice because when you're attracted to somebody, you don't decide to be attracted to them, it just goes. <gasps> That's how you know it's what? It's not a conscious decision. You can't say I consciously fell in love with that person. <laughs> No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So it's literally a subconscious thing that we are looking at consciously and decoding, decoding, decoding. We're bringing to light what was unknown under the surface. So looking at it, we must look at it as the state of an animal and go, what is, what is the state of this animal? How does this animal sexually Thrive, thrive, not survive. Well, here's how it thrives. If the alpha males of this species fuck the most beautiful women of the species, all of them, and the non-alpha males didn't fuck anybody or fuck the ugly ones, then you could say that it's the thriving of, of, of human race to have the strongest and most beautiful be around each other. And if it's a woman,
a thousand women because he has the ability to impregnate all of them. But they can't impregnate a hundred men. So they must choose one man and get pregnant from him. So if he's alpha enough, let's say four of my girlfriends, you know, that are with me, five, I have five right now, by the way, let's say five of my girlfriends that are with me, they must choose me as the most senior in life that they have access to, that they have access to, I must be most senior in my quality of mating. Now that says a lot. Because then you look at what they look like, what they're capable of, my girlfriends, and you go, whoa. And that is a testament of my ability and my power and my game. And why so many men respect me from all parts of life. There's an underlying understanding that we all have. This motherfucker is big to carry that much women of that quality. I can't even carry one of that quality. How the fuck do you have five now? How, how, how does, I mean, is it just out of this world for you? Five girls, what does that, what do you mean? What does that even look like to you? What do you guys do when you go out? Right, the common questions. Do you have like a schedule with them? Right, do you fuck all of them? Because original because There's
Okay, I'm back. Give it a fucking second. Obst fucking absurd. All right, all right. Let's do it again. Start video. Here I am. We got to go back and look at the, the human animal to understand this mating ritual, right? Your body is designed as a man to mate multiple times with, with minimum damage to you and maximum gain to you. The female's body is designed to mate with the highest value man you can find. I that mean the man who helped survive that's all that means and your body is designed to have a baby with that person then start to break down do you know why it's supposed to break down because once you have baby with a high value man your body no longer is needed in nature you've done your job so every child the woman has tremendously deteriorates her body now imagine if you had a child with a woman and when the child came out your body as a man suddenly aged as much as hers did. Imagine that. Imagine all the bullshit her body goes through was shared by you as a man. That would change the whole game. The pain she went through, all the after bullshit mental problems she has, right? The, uh, if you had that, it would be fucked up, but you don't. So that tells you that nature decided that that's not a punishment for you. But nature did punish you too. Do you know what it did? Let me show you this one. You cannot let go of a woman you love no matter what. There's every single logical reason to let go and you are a logical human being and you're that fucker that takes pride in your ability to think straight and move straight and suddenly you are the dumbest fuck ever but not really because you can clearly see your mistakes and you're thinking fuck it now you know what's funny she doesn't have that so that's not a punishment for her when she sees that you're no longer of value she can't even like you if she tried she tries a little bit she starts posting more with you and calls you her king be careful Come on, be careful when you suddenly become a king. <laughs> really? What's happening with this? When suddenly you're a king and you weren't a king before, your bitch has changed something inside of her. And it looks positive, but the last time I saw a bitch do something positive, mm, let me think about this. Nope, can't remember. There, that's better. However, the last time I saw a woman do something that was self-serving 100% was uh, minutes ago when I ordered food from a woman. So nature will punish you if what? Watch this. Nature will punish you if it's triggered in you to take care of a woman and you can't. Oh, fuck are you fucked. Now, her take care of a man, she's like, uh, what do you mean? Like bring him soup when he's tired, or you know, he'll get his own soup. Take care of him. Like what? I mean, I'm always there for him. <laughs> no, exactly. You don't even have the language of, of what I just said. You don't even get it. Like, what do you need to take care of him? Of course, I, no, you don't. You don't. No, you don't. Let me ask you a question. How many men in a relationship? You don't have to raise your hand. But how many men in a relationship ah uh, feel like that your woman is taking care of you? <laughs> Care of you. I bet no, no hand will go up. <laughs> yeah, one or two will go up, maybe shortly, not in a couple of months. But I don't think it's her job, so I'm not going to blame her. Christian D, I don't have the ability to mute people again. It's not a, her job. So we can't place our values on her. Just as she can't place her values on us.
Chris D, are you there or what? Nope. Check with him later. Later comes all the rules that humans put on it. But now we're going to look at this thing as raw as possible. You have a human body, that a male body does this, a female body does this, okay? The strongest male is supposed to mate with the most fertile female that's the most beautiful. That's just what it's supposed to be, okay? That's God, nature, whatever it is. If you follow that code and you trigger that code, then you're successful. Each code. What I am for sure is nature helps me. I'm a good rep, right? I rep nature, nigga. Where you from? Nature. Yeah. Christian, do you there? I wonder how many more times I'm going to have to say that before that becomes yes. Yeah, what's up, man? I don't. I can't mute people again, bro. Oh, wait. Let me make you. I'll make you the host right now. One second. Yes, I am. Okay. Let's see what we got. I don't want to fucking do yoga. I think I gotta do yoga. Yeah, it's good for you. Thanks. Thanks for making that clear. I thought it was bad for me. That's why I didn't want to do it because I thought it was bad for me. Of course, it's fucking good for me. Okay, it's, it still hasn't happened, Christian D, so I'm going to keep lecturing. When you do, just let me know. Okay. What else do we find if we look at, at this piece of nature and open it up and look into it and say, what the fuck's going on here? Oh, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do that. And then we find something else happens. Yep, okay, got it. Then something else happens. We also find that the female in nature always constantly does two things. One, it makes the men fight each other for her. Just so you know. Men in nature fight for the female. Fight to mate with her. So you, my friend, you, are engaged in a very dangerous activity the moment you want a girl. You're going to have to fight a guy. And nature tells you, you have to beat him. You have to beat the next guy to have access to her pussy. You didn't know that. I don't know what you thought the game was. Here's how the game goes. I'm the coolest, baddest motherfucker here. And that's why you want to fuck me. Everything else is a lie. I'm the strongest, fastest, baddest motherfucker in here. And you want to fuck me because of it. That's the beginning of what? Attraction. Boom. And when she feels this energy from you, she doesn't have a choice but to be attracted to you. Attraction is not a choice. What's her game? She says, you woman, you, she says, I'm the best piece of ass you could find right now. And I'm going to fuck you and only you. And that is how she seduces us. We want the hottest piece of ass who will only fuck us. If you do that as a woman, if you're the hottest piece of ass that will only fuck us, we will, we will, we will suddenly go under your spell. We won't even know what the fuck to do with ourselves, right? If you say, ouch, you go, what happened? What happened? What's going on? Who, what, where, what are we doing? Is everything all right? Want something, right? If you get the sniffles, we got clean eggs, we become a little bitch. And then you go, what happened to you? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I swear to God, I don't act like a bitch ever. But with you, I do because I love you. Shut up. Shut up. You better learn to calibrate the word I love you. The sentence I love you. Okay?
What's a good one? If you're at a if you're at a level where you could in a jokingly way be like, "Bitch, don't touch me," you know, like, like that's a joking way, right? By the way, if you can't joke like that with with your girl, get rid of her as soon as possible. She's like, if you ever say the word bitch with me, okay, <laughs> relax, bitch. Okay, because now the bitch is changing. Soon it'll be, the, it'll soon be exactly what you did abracadabra. You spoke into reality. I'm about to call you bitch exactly the way you don't want to be called a bitch. If you keep talking like that. Abracadabra, bitch. You're bringing into existence exactly what you don't want by talking about it. Shut the fuck up. Well, if you think you're a bitch, <laughs> now, now that's what you want, right? You got what you wanted. Are you happy, bitch? <laughs> and then that was followed by ho or whatever else you want to fucking call it, right? But she that brought that about. <laughs> you you condone you condone being violent to women. No, I don't. No, I don't. You do. You do. I don't. Okay, don't blame me of shit you want to do yourself. Try to use me. Okay. So that's the basic of the game. Now, why is this important to men? Because my friends, you actually stopped competing to some degree with the next man, didn't you? <laughs> you forgot that there's another man somewhere interested in your woman. And he's competing against you, but you're not. Why? Because you already got her. No, no, no. You got her because you won or you were the best thing available at that time, but she's still searching. Look at those eyes. Her eyes tell you, okay? Watch your woman's eyes, they'll tell you. You don't have to guess. Take it to a public place, sit down, have some drinks. Watch her eyes. Preferably, take her places where there is alpha men. Sit down and watch her eyes. Now, why would you wanna do that? You need to know that you're about to be left, so take, pay close attention and learn how to defeat those alpha men. That's what the game is. The game is played on many levels. One level that it's played that people don't see is you literally have to beat out other men in this game. Why? Because you have to cut her options, don't you? If she's that fine? In her mind, in her mind, she has to cut off other guys. You get it? You can try to cut off other guys on the outside. I've done that. You're always going to fail. She needs to cut off other guys internally. So that if externally the circumstances arise when another guy tries, she has already internally cut him off. That is what you're, what you're going for as a man. Now, women, why is this important? Because if, if, you cut off other men, and we're not evil, so there's some evil men. If you cut off other men, and we're not evil, then we feel an incredible urge and obligation to take care of you. For, for how long? For as long as you cut off other men, and you respect us, we actually can't help but to take care of you. We can't help it. It's crazy. It's like you see a diamond ring or something. You can't help it. You get wet. Same thing happens to us. Okay? So it's a female strategy, if done well, where she then starts communicating to her guy that he's the only one. And of course, every foul breath woman will ask me, she'll say, well, how about the guy? I'm sorry, what did you say? Well, how about the guy? What, are we having a pissing contest? What about the guy? I'm not talking about the guy, I'm talking about the girl. Well, what about the guy? Should he cut off other women? No, you missed the beginning of the lecture, bitch. Listen carefully. He should never do that. It would be off code. If you're on Instagram, what do we got here? Greeting the brother and another mother. This is uh, Sean Discovery Michaels from Three Second Rule. Sean was my first pickup instructor coach. Okay. Hey brother, I'm, I'm live on, on the other. This is not an Instagram lecture. The link clicked will take you to the actual lecture, which is up here. So Instagram is just kind of promoting, I'm promoting the lecture through Instagram because some people don't have this uh, 
computer capabilities. Okay, or whatever the fuck it is. Okay, what about the man? That's a question a man never asks. When you, when you talk about a woman, he never says, what about, what? he doesn't care. <coughs> what about the man? What, what if, can, he, can he do that? Shouldn't he have to cut off? Right? Shouldn't he have to cut off? No, listen, bitch, let me explain something to you. We go back to the beginning of the lecture. God, God wants him to have a lot of women around him, okay? Or it'll punish him. God wants you to have one man around you or it'll punish you, okay? Now, it's not about you being the same person or being the same gender, because you're not. It's about you being separate and opposite genders and having to come together to create a baby, all right? That fucking simple. Now, the question is, why wouldn't it just be so easy where you just mate so easily? Because there has to be a way for nature or God to prove who the best suitor is for that woman. Because God or nature doesn't give a fuck about you or I on an individual basis. Right? There goes my Instagram again. There we go. God or nature doesn't give a fuck about you or I on an individual basis. Your personal feelings, they don't matter about the subject. But your genes do matter. Okay? Now, I would like to say some things that if you did right away, you would become um, more attractive to the opposite sex. I think that's some good shit. We're on game or die, and so let's fucking talk about some game or die here. All right. Men. Does your clothing and the way you carry yourself, your haircut, your accessories, the, your external appearance, can it easily be placed into a certain type of archetype or tribe. That guy's a Harley guy. How do you know? Well, how would you know? You would know. Immediately you start assuming a certain type of outfit, outfit, certain type of hair, certain type of facial hair, right? Certain type of walk, certain colors come to mind when we go, that's a Harley Davidson guy. Or how about this? It's a Hell's Angels. You got it. Okay? If I say... That guy is a tattoo artist. That guy is a skater. That guy is a musician. What kind of music? Heavy metal. What kind of music? Country. What kind of music? Bollywood. All of those have an image to them. That guy is a UFC fighter. Right? That guy is an entrepreneur. Now, if I looked at you as a woman, what would I say? What tribe do you belong to? Are you the tribeless one walking through the jungle trying to make the hottest female? Are you trying to entice them with your dick? Well, only for nine, nine, seven a month. Learn who you really are to attract the female. Some testimonials. Yeah, before I started a rush mentorship program, I thought that my dick was big enough to grab any bitch. But then I started this program and realized it's actually who I am. I feel good about myself. Hi, my name is Amy. I've jumped on a lot of dicks, but the one that I jumped on, there were Arash students. I wanted to stay on their dick. Thank you, Arash. I love you. Yeah. You have to be able to categorize. You have to be able to be categorized. Okay? Here's a category. Are you ready for this? Category. Well, if you're, if you're from around here, you would know. Silicon Valley, which is San Jose uh, Bay Area. Silicon Valley computer engineer. Now these guys all, ex they're like the same fucking person. They're like a group of ants. Like what is wrong with you guys? How, how the fuck are you gonna get a girl? This dude invites me to one of these big Silicon Valley companies and I've always wanted to walk through their doors, right? So I've been to Facebook and I've been to Adobe, I think. And then when I went to the, you know, um, he, he messaged me, hey, I want to learn this and that. I go, okay. He goes, by the way, you said that you wanted to see these places. I can get you in. I was like, okay, that's great. Take me to lunch there. 
and then let's talk. So he takes me there and we, we start walking around and we get into the cafeteria, we sit down, I look around, I'm like, everyone's the same person here. It's like, it's like a group of clones sitting around. And then I was like, if I was a girl, who would I go with? That would be a shitty ass place. And then there I am sitting there, right? Look like I just got out of jail or some shit with all these people in sweats with tattooed head and face. And they're walking by looking at me like, what is that thing? You know? Hey, Sandy, did you see that thing over there? Right? Look kind of, look kind of scary. I know. Right? Click the link right there and arrive here. I can take your questions here. Oh, man. Hold on. Gotta check my messages. There we go. Now, gentlemen, I ask you something. If, ah, oh, I'm, I'm about to fuck you up. All right, let's go. Oh, if this is for all my people who've been following me for years. I got something for you. I got something for you. And if there are any haters, you need to watch and listen. It's important. This is important for all haters and all supporters of AZ motherfucking D for the last whatever amount of fucking years you've been doing this shit. Here we go. I've had 20 breakups. That's a lot of breakups. But let's say I only had, let's say I only had, instead of 22, I had two breakups. I can pretty much guarantee at some point, I can pretty much guarantee at some point, I would stop having girlfriends because it's just like, forget it. So I definitely wouldn't have 21 girlfriends, 20 breakups later, right? I definitely wouldn't. That means that what looked to the human clown as a failure of mine to mate was nature clapping for me and allowing another 18 or 19 to arrive into my life because they would have never been there. I would have never taken interest in them at that level. I would have never taken care of them at that level. And so by nature's standards, I've now impregnated more than 22 girls at least outside, I mean, I mean uh, in regards to being my girlfriends, not outside of that. I've, I've obviously had sex with a lot of other women, but that's different. But the level of nature, what, you know what would have been unsuccessful mating for me? Electra, who's my first girlfriend, and I stay together to the end of time, only her and I. What a failure of God. Imagine that. The only way God could succeed is if AZD keeps having his stupid heart broken so he can go and seduce the next finest woman anywhere. <laughs> Which becomes always the next girlfriend. Like she becomes so fine that whoever I'm with, we can't walk down the mall or places without everybody stopping and looking. That's the bitch that I'm going to go for. Now, in order to go for that, I'm going to have to have my heart broken again, everybody. So I ain't got room in the, I ain't got room in the fucking stable. The fuck's happening here? Five feeling alive. Not really. Five, damn, got no time for sleep. So I'm happy to report that what looked to the hater as a failure of me to succeed in my mating strategy, if you are so good, then why do they leave you? They leave me so I can find the next hottest bitch and make her fall in love with me. And they always return, keep watching. Because I'm not getting worse. Baby, if you fell in love with me five years ago, and then you meet me now, you've had five years of bad relationships without me and I've just gotten better. 
you know, my girlfriend Gold, you know, she texted me a picture yesterday. And the picture was from six years ago, a photo shoot of her and I. That woman was in love with me six years ago. She's had a lot of bad experiences since six years ago. Six years ago, AZD wasn't even AZD, it was AD. I have absolutely no doubt that you're gonna love me a billion times when you did it the first time. How could you not? And that goes for every man that's watching right now. You're gonna get better. She's gonna get worse. You were the best thing she had, remember? I, I swear you were the best thing she had. How do I know? You're here. Her other man does not take the time to understand her. And when any woman is going to mouth off in her ignorance and say, or even some ignorant guys, white knights, well, you don't have to study that. I want to understand my mate. I value her happiness. And I need to know who she is on a deeper level. No, bro, you don't need to study her. Because you're already perfect. Your girlfriend told me while she was riding my dick. Yeah. She has a little birthmark on the side of her thigh. On her left side, actually. I saw it when she sat on my dick. Hey, bro, you got this thing. Go. Go hang out with your girl. She loves you. Okay? But say these words to her. Say, pookie gums. Huh? The fuck? It's like an evil character. Who's this? Yuli, baby, click. Oh, hold on. Here, guys. This is the lecture. Click the link. I forgot to put it. Okay. So anyways, I'm happy to report that the experiment of mating with the most beautiful woman on the planet is going very well, everybody. I'd like to continue to do that. Okay? And I will, I will be glad to show you more, okay? And that's what we're talking about. I'm an experiment, okay? So now let's, let's um, oh, so what was I talking about? You, gentlemen, you need to belong to some kind of a group. Like uh, you need to belong to a organization that's recognizable. He's a skater. He's a rock star. He's a tattoo artist. He's a musician. He's a baseball player. He's a football player. He's a basketball player. Those are, all those guys look different. I don't know if you've ever stood next to a professional basketball player. Have you? Like a tall professional basketball player? Do you know they're, they come from different genetic? I don't know where the fuck they come from. Right? Two of my friends play for Stanford College right here. It's, it's not real when I stand next to them. I mean, it's like, what the fuck, dude? You guys, I'm up to their nipple. Can you imagine what it would be like to stand next to a man who comes up to your nipple? How tough am I to that guy as he looks at the top of my head? And I have to go like this to him. Conversate with him like this. Well, I know what that looks like. But can you imagine you're looking down at someone under your titty and talking to them as a guy? What do you want to do? You want to, do you want to pick them up? <laughs> Brother, I don't care if I get 50 people in there because that's not the lecture. Oops, there's a link. It keeps going away. Hold on. Let me give you the link again. Go over here. The lecture is here. Hold on. Pin the comment. Fuck. Yuli, press the link, please. Come to the actual event. Okay, let's try again. I swear my phone, man. Pin comment. Thank you. Okay, click that. Click that, I'm gonna stick that in a big bag. Okay. So anyways, it's, it's, it's you know, he's, he's much taller than me. Two of them are much taller than me. And it's kind of interesting, okay? I did, and it made me make an account or something. Oh, what? What the fuck's am I making accounts for? Okay. Well, make an account then. 
Make an account then so you can come to the Zoom, Zoom account probably. I lecture on this all the time, okay? Okay, let's continue. Man, your, your clothing, your jewelry, your accessory, whatever the fuck it is, must signal to her that you belong to a tribe. Otherwise, you're lonely walking in the world. Like you're cool until you come across a band. See that? There you are with your chick walking around and there's four band members in the fucking lobby. Shout out to the Oracle. Adrian. You're walking, you're holding your chick. There's four guys in a band standing there with their band clothing, right? Standing around. You know, suddenly, you feel like you got to puff up your chest and you feel small. Why? Because you're about to, you're about to with your woman, walk past a tribe of men. Uh-oh. You better fucking pray they don't want to attack you. You see that? And no matter how hard you try, her biology will feel exactly what you felt. Remember, you can't hide it. Because she also has feelings too. Now, how does she process walking with her man past a group of band members? You never think about that. Now, what if you're walking past a group of band members, but you're a skater and she loves skaters? And she knows that you have your crew of skaters. Now you could kind of withstand it a little bit, depending how you carry yourself. You're still walking past a tribe. And you better hope they don't attack you. But that tribe looks at you and you should communicate to them. I have boys too. This is real life. You as a man cannot be alone without other men backing you up. And if you are, you got to get busy making some friends. Go find an activity and learn the activity that you like and get good at it. And your friends will be people that share that activity with you, whatever it is. And you form a tribe through an activity. What do you like doing? Go find those people by joining an activity and that your class, your classmates become your group after a while. Right? Look, you don't want to be alone out there, man. I keep telling everybody. When you look at me, I'm not just me. I'm IMC Nation. That's why I'm so powerful and numbers keep growing. Okay? That's just what it is. If you want to understand more of that, go watch Fight Club. Same shit's going on here. This is Fight Club. The first rule of IMC Nation is you do talk about IMC Nation. Second rule of IMC Nation is you talk about IMC Nation. Third rule of IMC Nation is you talk about IMC Nation. And if it's your first time here, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> there you go. That's the answer. Okay. You have to pick your tribe. Your tribe will be an activity that you like and the people that do that. Now, no matter what, this is INC Nation and this worldwide. So you could actually use it. Like one of my friends had messaged me, they're doing a boot camp. I admire him, he's incredible. And he asked me, he said, you, have, you obviously have a global following. The areas like Europe or this and that that you don't have, would you like to do an affiliate program with us? I said, no, I don't like those fucking words, but I'll shout you out no matter what because I believe in you. And I said, if you want to pay me something, pay me something. And he did. He didn't have to because I would have done it anyways. But that's somebody on the outside tapping into our intonation, which is where you are. How you use it is important. I'm making it a nation of warriors, players, hustlers, kings, and queens. And I, as, as the front, front guy, I'm going to go forward and submit any person, place, or thing that stands in front of me with my communication. That's it. Done. And you'll keep seeing it. Meanwhile, I'll demonstrate an ability to control female energy through actual females, not through talking or blogging and shit. Okay? Now, that's my role. That's what I'm doing as I gather more and more people that are strong. Our network, is, our network is so much you don't even know. You don't even know, okay? But what are you gonna do? Because you can, if you know a few of the guys in here, you could be with a professional musician, a lot of them, champion boxer, champion jujitsu fighter, editor, writer, gangster, prisoner, king, uh, I mean, uh, um, 
president-elect in a country, bunch of strippers, <laughs> shitload of hot women, right? you name it, INC Nation. But what are you going to use it for? How do, you, how do you brag with it? How do you demonstrate your group? Who are you? If you want hot women, you need to be somebody. Okay? No hot woman wants to be with a nobody. When she could be with a somebody. And you're a nobody if nobody gives a shit about you. It's not a cool thing that you and your cute little girl are going to go live in a cute little house with your cute little lives killing each other. It's much better that you and your woman go acquire more and more power and territory and take on more of the world as a challenge and bring on more and more people into your tribe. However that's done is up to you. Then you get stronger and stronger and stronger. And is there anybody here who's not attracted to strength and power? I mean, are you retarded? I'm gonna get that super weak car that has no power. Well, my favorite superhero is the guy with no power. My favorite basketball team is the one that always loses. I like lawyers that lose every case. I love doctors that don't know how to heal somebody, you know? Like, no one says that shit. I love that boxer who never won a fight. God, I love watching him. Can't wait to go to his fucking thing, right? There's a reason they're called losers, because they're losing. Now, you can associate with losers, okay? Then people will question it. Are you a loser? No, 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 I'm just being nice. You what? I'm being nice. What does that mean? What does that mean? Who's your team? Okay, get on a team, guys. Or create a team. Even if you do this, ready? Check this out. I'm about to make every guy 100 times hotter for the girls in your town. Ready for this? Pick your favorite football team and basketball team and baseball team. Oh, wait, I'm speaking to people in the United States, just so you know. Okay, you do your, the, the decoded for your own city. Football, basketball, and baseball in the United States. Pick your favorite team. Start dressing that jersey and that hat. Start putting some insignia around and grab some tickets to a fucking game or two and act like you're into it. You at least have a tribe. It's called your basketball team, right? When the 49ers play here, gangs show up. Northern California gangs, my homeboys, they show up in red from head to toe. 99% of them could give a fuck about the 49ers, but they like showing up in red and looking like a giant fucking army. Right? Fresh red fucking Nikes. White fucking sock to the top, red. Little fucking dickies, fucking red. Little red, little red fucking Niners hat. Put on your fucking everything crisp, looking sharp. I'm going to go to the Niners. You are, homeboy? What are you, throwing a football these days? No, nah, I say I don't throw footballs. What do you do? Just drink, eh? Yeah? Yeah, boy, well, let's go. Let's party. All right? Hella bitches there. We're going to have a barbecue. We're going to be at the park. <laughs> that motherfucker just tapped into the 49ers. Let me see my messages real quick. Okay. You see, so every man, for seduction purposes, go grab your favorite fucking team, go spend three, four, five hundred dollars, start making some, some cash to put aside, and grab yourself maybe a jersey, a couple of shirts, little fucking shoes, you know, a little hat, and just start being that fucking guy just to get, just to get bitches. <laughs> because every time your team plays, we see, we see your, your tribe, right? I just talked about the Niners. What about Raiders? Oakland Raiders. Oakland Raiders are like a thugged out group. Like you know here that if you're an Oakland Raider fan, you have a certain vibe about you. You're silver and black. But you see, from that perspective, I can admire it. Every man needs his tribe. 
right? And I can guarantee you, if you're wearing a 49er jersey or another 49er jersey, and you're in the street, and some dude who's not wearing it is talking shit to you, the other 49er jersey is going to look at you and be like, what's going on there? <laughs> Why? It looks like you're from the same tribe. So that's for every man. Find a tribe, belong to it. If there isn't any, grab a football team, basketball team. Get on, get on, get on the bandwagon, dude. Why? Because you want to fuck some girls. Then from there, we'll, we'll go forward. I'll show you how to make that even better, right? Just start somewhere. Don't be the lone stranger in the jungle, man. You're not representing survival. You're representing lonely stranger in the jungle. Did you ever see this thing? Did you ever guys see, like when I was going to high school, 1992, Delmar High School in San Jose. There was a lot of gangs in our, in our school. I never forget this guy. His name is Gus, Gustavo. Actually, I remember Gustavo in eighth grade in Campbell, uh, Campbell uh, Middle School here. Gustavo was the biggest nerd I've ever seen. This dude was a, a Mexican dude who had a big nose and it looked like he had um, um, like guinea pig or gopher front teeth. Like that. With like a big nose, skinny ass head. And I was just like, dude, that dude's ugly. He looks like a rat, you know? Nobody liked fucking Gustavo, dude. It was just like, ew, that, that was Gus, Gustavo. One morning, walks in Gustavo. I shit you not, man. In, in shop class, I think it was, or wood shop or some shit. This motherfucker is wearing his red flannel. He's wearing a hairnet. <laughs> He's wearing dark ass sunglasses in class, right? Remember, this was one of the biggest nerds I've ever seen in my life. He's buttoned the first four, which stands for Norte here. And he goes in with the black tank top and like what he, he, had a, he had a fucking makeover, a gangster makeover, basically, right? He comes to class and I swear to God, his whole neck is hickeys. Hickeys. Like some bitch sucked on his neck. Some bitch sucked on the rat's neck. A lot of times. This motherfucker had got jumped into the gang a day or two before. Next thing you know, he was hot. <laughs> well, I never forgot who Gustavo was because that was eighth grade. And I saw him in, fr in the freshman year. I saw him in junior year. And when we got to high school by junior year, Gustavo was treated very differently by women because they had no idea. I, I knew him. But he belonged to something. The secret to seducing men the secret to seducing men is to make them belong to something that makes them feel strong, right? If you're women watching me, this is, this, these th things you need to know. I'll get to you in a minute how to get hot. Yours is just very simple. We want to belong to something that makes us feel like we're part of a, because that's what we are. We're hunters from a while ago. We need our fucking tribe. We, stop isolating us in these fucking bedrooms and, and apartments and getting us to fucking invest all of our money in a house for just you and I. For just you and I in a fucking house? Jesus, fuck. I could fit a tribe in here. You don't need a house with me. You need a one bedroom apartment which costs $2,200 in San Jose, which is expensive here, but okay, that's all. And you know the other fucking 3,000 that I'm gonna put into a fucking house? I'm gonna have that every month because I'm gonna leave the apartment in the morning. Why? To go hunting. I won't return until the moon has come up and it's in the middle of the night. That's when I finish hunting every day, bitch. Every day know this about me. I'm out there hunting. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day I'm out there hunting. Hey, I was just thinking about you today. Hoping you're okay. I was going to send you a message. You know you are. So, do I need a fucking three, four, five bedroom house? What's your opinion on narcissist abusive men? I need you to do this. It says Princess THC. Click that link, please. You look gorgeous. Come over here. 
If you can't, tell me you can't click it and I'll answer you. All these pretty girls watching. I wish you guys could see them. Girls, if you're online right now, press your video. We're tired of looking at good looking men. Okay, let's look at some good looking women. Just one of you right now could get so much attention that would feed your pussy for a whole fucking hour probably. Because I know you need attention real bad just to feel alive. Any woman who's smart enough right now and you're getting nervous, like, damn, I really want to click this, but I don't want to be the first bitch who does that. I'm going to look desperate. No, just do it. Do it and you win. Every bitch will hate on you, but you'll win. Every bitch will be like, that whore. But the men will be like, good job. I want to save you and protect you, baby. Yeah. Okay. What time is it? Cool. Let's go a little bit longer. So, men, we, we, you have to start thinking about tribes, right? You know, I have a story. It's a good one. They normally are. I have a tattoo under my eye. I have just been able to get on storm here and have sent a message. Okay. Hold on. My girlfriend's texting me. Which one? Oh, two of them. What kind of jelly do you like? Good timing. The other one. Feeling blah. <laughs> Feeling blah is my girlfriend Gold's first message to me today. Thank you. Thank you, baby. You feeling blah? Okay. Oh, here. This thing, this tattoo I showed you. It's funny. Somebody says to me the other day, do you know that's the logo for um, child prostitution? <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. She's all, yeah, it is. It's for Pizzagate. I said, no, it's not. I know what it is because I got it. You don't know what it is. You didn't get it. It's not on your body. It's on my body. And it's not, I didn't get a pizza gate under my fucking eye, you weirdo. What's wrong with you? No, I'm just saying. I don't care what you're saying. What you're saying is stupid. Let me tell you what it fucking is. This is the logo for the Gracie family. You know, the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu family? It's their first logo that I ever saw. I tattooed that under my eye. It was so cool for me to say, I'm a Gracie Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Well, I am. <laughs> Damn, you know, what, you know that, what that does to guys that hear that understand what that is? They're like, whoa. I don't know, I'm, not just a, I'm not just a black belt. I'm a Gracie Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Oh, right there, Letty. There you go, word. Well, he knows what that is. That's not an easy thing to earn. And then if I say I'm the first black belt under Batata, I don't know who that is, who's the first black belt under Gordo, who, they know who that is, who's the first black belt under Jean Jacques, who that is, who's the first black belt under Carlos Gracie Jr., who's the first black belt under Carlos Gracie Sr. I'm in the lineage of first black belts ever in that line. Now, am I the best jiu-jitsu fighter? You know, I think Letty could probably beat me right there in a jiu-jitsu match right now. I'm serious. Well, he would stand a good chance. I know where my skills are right now. But the spirit of the Gracie family is in me if you ever fight with me. And Half Gracie, shout out to Half Gracie, one of the people I admire the most, his academy is where I started. He has a famous quote. He said, when you fight, you are out of the way and the spirit of the pit bull takes over. And he goes, that's the Gracie spirit. And I understand that shit. I am a tough motherfucker. And I'll say that to anybody. You will have a fucking fight in your hand. You will know why I'm a black belt. And if you get me, you're gonna not wanna train with me again because you know I'm coming and I'm coming and I'm coming and I'm coming and when I get you, then I'm gonna hurt you. Well, then I'm gonna hurt you first. I, I don't care. I don't care. That's not a problem. That's not how I evaluate the fight. I evaluate the fight, how I'm gonna hurt you. I wanna make you scared. I want you to know that you, you, you're never gonna break my spirit. You're never ever, you're not gonna break my spirit, dude. Good luck. But if I get my hands on you, I will crush your spirit. I'm telling you. Oh no, I can't see now. This is tough talk, right? You see that? But well, you know what that is? That's my tribe. So I'm now speaking from my tattoo. My interpretation of it. Maybe one of the uh, Gracie masters will listen to me and say, you're a fucking idiot. Yes, sir. All I can say to a senior of mine in that is yes, sir. 
because he's telling me I'm not representing him right. Or somebody would come and say, one of them would say, that's perfect, Arash. I say, yes, sir, because their logo. I'm just interpreting it, but it gave me a lot of power. I didn't want to put that under my eye, and then my teacher would be like, you can't, what the fuck is wrong with you? You can't wear that. No, I wear it with pride. If we're going to fight, and you got my arm, and you want to break it, break it. That doesn't end the fight. You just broke my arm. Now it's going to be a little harder. <laughs> now there's more, right? Oh, that's crazy. No, I love it. That's why I stayed there, because that's not how everybody did it. But that's how my teacher did it. You never back down, you go forward. Okay, so now I'm giving you my tribe. Now watch this. If next I put a picture in the academy with me, Batata, and some of the guys with our uniform and we're all standing looking at the camera, you get a different level of respect from me. You go, fuck. And a girl will be like, that's hot. You got it. There's my tribe. Letty liked that shit, right? Because so, he he's put in the work. Because you put in the work. Now I'm just showing you what seduction looks like. Cameron McGriff up there was a professional baseball player. A picture of him in his professional uniform with his team is, is seductive. If he says to a girl, my team and I, we're going to go have some beers afterwards. We just won the baseball game. That's like, that's like showering her vagina with water. What's that? Water on your, on your vag. You're so wet now. So we, when we tap into this, we have titties for the girl. Okay? This is why you want to get my product. Game or die. You see the difference? Who the fuck is going to teach you this? Nobody. That's for sure. That's for sure. Another thing I'll tell you, the difference between IMC Nation and anywhere else is when I teach, from the fighter to the musician to the baseball player to the gangster you're all on right now just so you know from the high level entrepreneur that can easily afford all of my programs in a heartbeat to the person who struggles to make a dollar you're all watching right now just so you know i know the people that are on from the ugly girl to the super hot girl you're they're both watching right now that's a trip you can't find a teacher like that only the coolest of the cool arrive, please. Okay. All right. So let's get into the woman and answer some questions. All right. All right, girls. What, what, what can you do now after this lecture to get hotter? Okay. Watch this. Watch. I'm, I'm not even going to tell you to do your makeup, which you should know. Here, I'm going to give you game or die. It's a different level of knowledge because I want you to buy my product too. 15. Listen. Here's the, guys, watch. Watch how this will make any woman more attractive to you. If you want to be more attractive to a guy, now be careful, because I'm about to give you a secret, and he's going to want to fuck you just because of this move, okay? Smile more when you talk to guys. It's a secret hidden power that no man has looked at until I said it. If girls start smiling at you when you're talking, your attraction goes up for them. This is a fact of the fact of the fact. You could be a fat, chubby girl with great titties. And you're just some fat, chubby girl with some titties. Until you look at me and smile, then I go, those titties in my mouth, probably. Suddenly, my genetics start to look at you differently than every other person around. Now, if you're a seven, and your friend is a nine, and your nine friend is keeping a hard face every time I'm going by, and you keep smiling as you talk, I'm going to take you over the nine. And so will every other man here. Why? Because the nine looks like she's not going to give access to us. So our body's not designed to fuck that thing that doesn't want to fuck us. But our bodies as men are designed. You want to fuck? Let's go. Okay. That's how we are, by the way. You know, in like an ideal movie scene, you and I, gentlemen, we're sitting down, having dinner, eating outside restaurant with our girls. And some girl walks by and taps you and says, yeah, she says, I really want to fuck you. And you go, okay, cool. Right now? It's like, yeah. Everybody, you go, hold on. Put that down. Put your shit down. Okay, and you tell the table, I'm going to go fuck her, and I'll be right back. And everybody's like, okay, cool. Do you want us to order you something? You say, oh, looking at her, I'll be back in about five minutes. Okay, and you go over there, and you fuck her, and she gives you a hug. She exchanges the numbers. You come back. She goes away, and you sit down. That would be ideal. Women wouldn't understand that, but for us, that makes sense. Yeah. 
we go right back and, and enjoy the meal and, and still love the girl that we were with even more. We're excited now. We were getting bored sitting there eating the same food in the same environment with the same girl, talking the same stupid subjects, pretend like other women don't exist. <laughs> okay, no. We're having food, we're eating. That was, would you like to fuck? Yeah, for sure. You want to go clean your vagina before we do it? No, just wash it. Just go to the bathroom and wash it. Okay, use whatever the fuck you need. Then you go back, you fuck, you come back, you don't miss a beat, you're, you're excited. You know what you want to do next? Girls, you want to know the secret? At that moment, if your man has money, he's going to buy you something, right? If a, if a person with flowers walks by, a little Mexican person, we have flowers around here. When they walk by, at that moment, your dude would be like, come here, Alejandra, come here. Rodrigo, come here. <laughs> How much are those roses? 10, give me 30 of them. Here's, th here's $3,000 for my baby. <laughs> Why do you love me so much? Well, because you're on code, bitch. I just wanted to fuck that bitch. You came back, you understood, everybody's cool. She got my number, she's not all that. She may hit me up in a month or two or a week, I don't know. You know, whenever the fuck things go down the way they need to go down, we'll fuck it again. And this is a great relationship. We love each other for that. She's pretty cool. Well, I just don't want to see her. I don't want to see her be around a lot. I don't either. We're on the same team. We're on the same. We're good. We're both good. I'll make sure she doesn't come around so much, right? Well, I just want to make sure that that bitch better not think that that she's better than me. No, no, no. If she thought that, I wouldn't have fucked her. It's, it's the fact she's respectful. Like everything you say, I agree with. The only thing I don't agree with, which you don't even agree with, is that I shouldn't have fucked her. Are you kidding me? Are you stupid? Got an obligation to God. Okay? Here's God's number. Dial him. Find out what he's got to say. Right? Beep. 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 Why is the third one always longer than the first two? You ever, is that the first one on the other side? It goes... Beep. Then it goes, Burr. like, whoa, why, is there, why was there an extra second added in the last one? I mean, it should be just a fucking math, right? And then, hello? Yeah, is God there? Yeah, it's God, what's up? I didn't mean to bother you. Go get on with it. Busy. Yeah, you know, Arash said it was okay for him to fuck other people. Bitch, of course it's okay. You don't call me for that. What else are you calling me for? Have a real request or something. No, I just wanted to know, like, what makes it? I made it okay, all right? I made it okay, bitch. Don't waste. You know why I don't answer your fucking prayers, you hoe? Because this is what you do. You fuck with my number every time. I, I, I pick up the phone, bitch, as God. You say some dumb shit. You never worry about your own business, hoe. That's your problem. That's God talking on me, yeah? Every time you pray, you pray for another motherfucker's downfall. Every time you wish, you wish for another person to not do well. You're fucking crazy, bitch. Don't call me again. Go get your, go to church, bitch. Okay? Call me after church. But God, but God. I don't know. God just doesn't give me the attention anymore. You know, he doesn't care. God, you don't even care, God. You don't care. You never cared about me. Hello? It's God, bitch. You say that one more time, I'll fuck you up. Okay, sorry. That's what God should do. God should talk shit like no one's business, right? Like, you know, like I'm talking right now, it's just like, pow, whoa, fuck. God's like, don't you say my name, Alash. Okay, sorry. It's the last time, but he puts up with shit. And that, that's the rule. You put up with shit, you'll get more of it. Okay, women, I gave you the secret of secrets to bring you from seven to nine. Smile more than the girls around you. We will zero in on you. Attraction is not a choice. We start thinking, we stand a chance having your titties in our face, so we're gonna like you more, okay? Simple. Gentlemen, you alone are one thing, but remember my friend Gus, who came up with tattoos in his fucking neck? You could be Gus. Just figure out, don't join a gang, but figure out what to join that looks like a tribe, a gang. Gang is a bunch of people, you know what I mean? That's your gang, that's your group. And then push forward that because there will There I am again.
he's using the power of the tribe, the power of the pack, Caesar Milan would say. Okay? All right, here's what we're going to do. Uh, Christian D, are you on or are you not on? He's not on. All right. Now, I'm going to click the chat. Go ahead and write your questions. I see Brian Marshall say, their love is based on adoration. Adoration is nothing more than a concentrated amount of respect. Respect is derived from power. From all my experiences, I have to demonstrate power if I want to be loved. Otherwise, I will be held in contempt for being weak. Fact of nature. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna analyze every word in that to tell you whether that's true or false. Okay, Ramona says can we can we can unmute. I'd rather you type it because when someone asks a question, sometimes they go all over the place. And if you type it, then you have to make your understanding more concise. Then going um well you see what happened like you're not gonna type that right, but you would say that. Well and then uh, one time this happened. No, just type it if you can. It'll make the, this go smoother for everybody. That's why. Otherwise, I love hearing people's voice because when people talk, I get it. Get it differently. Any questions? Okay. Okay, so as a lesbian, am I hacking the system for a greater survival for the girl by seducing her? No. No, 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 no. What you need to look at as a lesbian is a statistic of how many lesbians, after a deep relationship, left their lesbian lover for a dick. Ramona, you need to confront that one. How many women were in a lesbian relationship that was deep to the other lesbian, and suddenly they left? and got with a man and completely cut off a lesbian, there's a lot that I know, personally. The lesbian is like a placeholder for a girl who's not a lesbian, you see? Now, you are gonna attract women who aren't lesbian, but are kind of like into it, and you could kind of convert them in quotes or whatever the fuck it's called, right? You could get them to get with you. I know this, I've seen this. But remember, you're a placeholder until the right dick comes along. Now, if you're a lesbian, like you're just not going to have dick in the rest of your life, and you find another lesbian who is not going to have dick for the rest of your life, if this was the fact of nature, then there would be no more kids ever coming out of anybody. Because nature would say, well, that's the end of the game. So what's happening with you? I can't claim to understand lesbians and gays. I can say this is what I've observed. This is what I've observed. So are you hacking the system? I don't know. I don't know what hacking it means. To me, hacking is when you start winning it. Because I'm seducing girls with BFs. You're seducing girls with BFs, yes. And that tells you how pathetic those guys are. See? Girls are always very surprised when they get with, um, well, not when they get with me. Girls that are, are around me. I get a, okay, I got a lot of girls who are lesbian who love me because of my women. Obviously, right? They want to get with these girls. And so one of the first things that happens if I'm out and like, like a lot of strippers I know do that, they're just like, oh my God, I love someone. So they name one of my fucking girlfriends like, oh, you know, oh, rah, 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 And I say, they're like, well, would you mind? I'm like, if you can, if you can, I like to see it. Then I can mind. I can't answer, do I mind? Because you can't do it. As I say, do you mind if I fly? I don't think so, but fly and let me see what it's like. Maybe then I mind, right? Maybe if someone flew around me, I'd be like, I mind that shit because I don't know how to do it. Stop. But right now, you can't presume you're going to take my women from me. And some have tried. And they get shut down real hard. Not softly. And then they get embarrassed. I told you. I told you, don't do that. So, I don't know. That's all I can say. Next, Tommy says... How should I act towards a res resistant ex? Like she feels guilty and shit and fucked another guy after six months. But is that something I should forgive? But we did it for two years. I mean, is she your, still your girlfriend? If she's your girlfriend, then you have to forgive. If she's not your girlfriend, wh why does it matter if you forgive or don't forgive? It would be in the context of if she's your girlfriend. Now, if she's your girlfriend, would you forgive her? I would. Because how are you going to live with someone if you don't forgive them. Like, well, you're always going to hold that. This is going to be fucked up. Okay? If you want to get over, if you want to get over 
somebody doing something to you that you love, all you have to remember is what you've done to others or to her. And then you don't feel so bad about what's happened to you. Right? That's like a mental technique. A mind technique. How do you get over when someone you feel has betrayed you that you love? Huh? Well, do you still want to be with them or not? If the answer is yes, remember all the shit you've done to others and to her. It should be even though. In fact, they might have to do more <laughs> just to even out with you. You may have done worse. They just don't know. So relax with your fucking, I'm a saint and you're not kind of bullshit. But yeah, it still hurts, but you can forgive them by realizing that if they found out all the shit you did, would they forgive you? So don't go there, right? Because that opens the door to your crimes. So she's now committed a crime. You've been committing crimes. Call it even. Let's start again. All right? Okay, next. Capone says she resists to everything I say. Is that part of something earlier? I don't see it. Ramona, will you show how to seduce a straight girl? Because I remember you were able to seduce a lesbian. Every day I teach how to seduce a straight girl. What do you think I'm teaching? My game is for straight girls. It's not for lesbians. <laughs> what do you mean? All my girls are straight. Every girl I've been with is straight. I've also seduced lesbian. What do you mean? You said, well, you show how to seduce a straight girl. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. I'm teaching game right now for people who want straight girls. You're the only lesbian right now who wants it in this group, as far as we know. Dan, why do people turn on their idols and become haters? Hmm. The why, I don't know, but I've seen it happen a lot. Okay. I haven't hated on a mystery, on Manu, on Batata. I haven't done it. I won't do it to my teachers. I did it when I was younger to Grandmaster Ernie Reyes, but I went and I apologized deeply and I bent down and I kissed his feet. And I told him whenever he wants, he could call me at 1 a.m., 2, 3, 4, 5 a.m. I will go wherever he has and I'll clean the bathrooms and I'll clean the toilets and nobody needs to know about it. How else can I make it up? I don't know. I, I fucked up. So, so yes, I did disrespect one of my teachers when I was younger. At 21, I left and it was wrong. And at 39, I went back and I apologized. 19 years later, or 18, 19 years later. Okay, next. Tommy says, she was my girlfriend. Mm, I don't know, I can't go back in my mind. I guess I am too nice, says Pete. Probably, yeah. That's for about 99% of men, you're too nice. Men are so nice. They're lying about you. Men are assholes. No, they're not. No, they're not. I know very few assholes. And those assholes, nobody likes them, bitch. You're the only crazy person who likes them. Their friends don't like them. No friend likes an asshole friend. We try to keep away from those people. You know why men can't be assholes? Because if you're an asshole, another friend will punch you in the face. Because we belong to tribes. But you know why women can be bitches? Because they'll just talk to each other forever about it. Oh, well, bitch, I would whatever. And bitch, I this and that. And bitch. And men don't do that shit. So you, assholes don't last in our DNA because if you're an asshole, you're an asshole to everybody. You know, I met a guy in LA. Probably watching. I show up. I see one of my friends. And there's another dude there. And my friend comes up. And he's very aggressive looking. He's quite a gangster. And he comes up. And I, and I look at the other guy. I'm just like, who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that guy? And he says to me, damn, this cat can rap. He was just spinning some bars. I said, okay. And the dude gets up and walks up to me. Like, hella confident. And I look at him. I'm looking up and down. I'm like, from the outside, this literally looks like a little jackal just walked up to two lions with hella confidence. So I'm kind of thrown off. I'm looking at him, I'm looking at me, then I'm looking at this goober that just walked up. And he's like, so what's up for later? <laughs> and immediately I think, dude's a fucking asshole. Nothing's up for later. 
Then Electra and Hannah were, were with me. They get out of the car to go to use the bathroom in this place. They drop me off. And when they hug me, and they, no, no, they're, no, they're, they're, they're walking, right? And the dude says, he looks at them, he goes, let's invite those girls. I said, those are my girlfriends. He said, oh, I said, no, girlfriend, girlfriend, like you have there. He said, oh, they're working right now? I said, no, not like that. And then I was like, this is double asshole move. You're, 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 you're moments away from me. If I was a lion, I would eat you right now. Okay? I've already seen it in my mind. Long story short, I tolerate the piece of shit because my friend has tolerated him. And the introduction was through him. But it's obvious through my demeanor that I don't really like the fucking dude. Later, I see the dude again. I was in Hollywood. I was eating by myself. I walk out. I stand outside. I like standing around in Hollywood, just kind of feeling the vibe, whatever. Oh, my God, here comes this asshole again. He's walking with another guy who seems wealthy the way he's dressed. And yeah, he shakes my hand, walks off. I liked him a little bit better. Then later, the motherfucker messages me on Instagram. Yo, what's up for tonight? I'm like, you fucking asshole. I'm going to look at his fucking Instagram. So I'm like, this guy's not piking my fucking curiosity, right? And I look at him, and I don't like him. And I still don't like him. And because I don't like him, he's not going to be invited anywhere. He seems like an asshole. <laughs> okay? Plain and simple. A man asshole doesn't last. Unless he's the strongest in that tribe, then what are they going to do about it? You better hope there's nobody stronger or three or four gang up on you. Got it? But women can be bitches for the rest of their lives and no one gives a shit because they're just going to talk. Gossip talk. Now they're fighting. Ew, so unattractive. So unattractive. Okay. Aiden says, if your girlfriend cheats on you, shouldn't that be the end? Only if you decide. Only if you decide. Depends on the girl, depends on the circumstances, depends on who you are to her. I, I, I don't say end it. One time, a while back, one of my girlfriends cheated on me and I stayed with her. And I went and I told, I, when I was doing live free lectures on game, three days a week, about three to four hours for free, I thought game. People showed up, I was devastated. I said, one of my girlfriends cheated on me. I found out today, I, was like, I said, I'm, I'm fucked up. I started to describe how I felt. I said, but you know what? I decided to give her another chance. It was like, ah. I said, I weighed out the value that she has. I looked at the things I've done. I did the whole thing, right? I said, and I can say, I don't want to be with her anymore. But I'd be lying internally that that was what I wanted. And then I said to them, remember this moment because no man ever told me this shit. So I'm going to tell you, one day in the future, this may happen to you. And if you think there's an obligation to break up with a woman you love, you're wrong. Because I'm not going to. Not on this term. If I break up on this term, then I gave her to that guy. She has to make a choice, me or him. And if it's me, she's going to have to deal with it a certain way. So she chose me at the time. And I literally drove her to where he worked. I said, go right now. Go tell him what I got to tell you. <laughs> Went in. I watched. Listen. I wanted to fucking hurt the guy, but I don't think it was his fault. You can't hurt a guy for taking your girl. <laughs> stupid. You're dumb. You want to, but you're not going to. It's stupid. Okay? You don't throw, don't throw one punch over a fucking girl who chooses to be with another man. Fuck that hoe. So I stayed with her for a while. Right? And the breakup was not going to happen because of that shit. So anyways, I said this story. And like some months later, I got a call from a fighter who was like, Sensei, I need to talk to you. I was like, what's going on? He's like, oh, are you in your office? I was like, yeah. And I was like, hey, what's this guy going to say, right? I really don't want to talk to him. He sounds fucked up. He's too strong to sound like that. And he came in. His face was all white. He sat down. I was like, what's going on, man? He's all, well, you know, um, my girlfriend cheated on me today. And I caught her. I was like, oh, okay. I know what that feels like. And he's like, yeah. He's all, I just want to thank you because I remember when that happened to you and you said that. He's all. I really don't want to break up with her. I said, you don't have to. You have to reestablish rules and boundaries, remember what you did, and decide if she's worth staying with or not. He stayed with her. They broke up at another time, but over another reason. See that? You're going to break up, you're going to break up. But maybe she cheats on you and you say, you need to go. Why? Because you and her never established that value. 
I'll give you an example. I've been with Electra for 12 years and five months. If Electra cheats on me, would I break up with her? No. No. And I can say that, and she's like, she could be like, yeah, I'm gonna cheat on her, but she's not gonna do that. She wouldn't be my girlfriend. See? But should that they come? Nah. If she wants to stay with the guy she, she fucking cheated on me on, then she can go with that guy, and then we break up for sure, okay? But it ain't gonna, no, I'm not throwing away 12 and a half fucking years on this planet with somebody who I've been through all that shit because of one stupid fucking moment and give the guy a fucking freebie. Take her away if you like. Go for it. Good luck, bro. Yo, I fucked her. So what? Fucked her a lot more than you have. Okay? Every once in a while, lightning does hit a person that's walking. You know that? So that, that doesn't do shit. People do win the lottery too. Okay? You won the lottery. Not that it's happened, you know, I mean, it sounds like, no. But that, that worst case scenario. Now, let's say I fucking, uh, uh, Gold, my new girlfriend, but she was a porn star, so it changes the rule a little bit, right? But not really, not in that case, not in the case of cheating. I don't even know about her. A brand new chick cheats right away, get the fuck out. We have no investment. Nothing's been built, right? You already betrayed me, Jesus. <laughs> well, we were new to each other. You shouldn't have said yes then. Okay. All right. Wrapping it up, okay? Our society tolerates these assholes, people somehow, right? Well, we are our society, so we have to change it. We can't tolerate them. Is it possible, as it says, to command the room without being the most talkative person? Absolutely, I do it all the time. All the time. I'm not the most talkative person. I become the most talkative person at the right time. Sometimes I sit there quiet as shit. I'm completely sure, Ramona says, I will never want a guy. I'm completely sure I will never want a guy, okay? How do I find a girl that is truly 100% into women? One that is sure she will never get with a guy. One that has never been with a guy, who's never had the desire to be with a guy. Go find her. And that would be a great relationship. You guys would probably stay together for a very, very, very long time because you're both monogamous by nature. That's a moment. Well, woman. When people say, they say, do you think people are monogamous by nature? You can't say people. You got to say men and women. Are women monogamous by nature? They can be. It's in there as a potential. Can men be? No. You mean it's not a potential? No. He's going to have to destroy himself internally to do it. Men have done it. In my family, men have done it. They're also very unhappy. And those men, let's say two of my uncles, are cheering for me every day on Instagram. And they tell me they're so proud of me. The only fucking people in the family that say that. Your advice says, Lala, your advice for women on what attracts a strong, powerful man to want to take care of her. Good advice. Begin to admire the way he thinks and begin to admire what he does and show him that you want to make it your business to contribute what he does because you believe in him. It's very difficult to resist that if you're good looking. You see the men, you can see their faces like, yeah, dude. Look, that, that's what we want. I want you to admire me for my quality that got me here. Right? So, so if I admire about myself that I'm fearless without a master, you would do well admiring that about me. I love that about me. I want you to love that about me. Then if you see that I'm about changing the world and the culture, I want you to love that about me. And I want you to contribute to it. Then if all of that is the case, I want to take care of you. Why? Because you're contributing to my core power. And so my core power is growing. So I want to, I want to take care of the thing that does that for me. Outside of that, be so hot that you put them under a spell. And that can work too. We can, we can, as men, fall in love with the way you look. It's possible that we know nothing about you and we want to take care of you. Okay? In fact, all the greatest poems and all great mythology and love stories are about women that inspired this in men. It's never about a woman that had to learn to seduce a thousand ways 
Okay, Cleopatra did. Marilyn Monroe did. But they have their own mythology. The other mythology is she walked up and everybody just, oh my God, she was so beautiful. Right? We stop describing women like that. It's like they make it look like it's wrong to describe her beauty. Okay, finally, Aiden Woodley says, how do you command the room without talking, etc.? Is it breathing, energy manipulation? Well, look, the way you're forming the question tells you if I gave you the exact answer, you wouldn't be able to do it. I'm going to tell you why. First, learn to command the room by talking. Then ask me how to do it without talking. Because talking is a way of communicating that gets the room to be under your spell. As you do that, you realize there are certain things you say that don't do it, certain things you say that do it. So your communication becomes tighter. After a while, you realize that some things you say can be said with gestures. Some things you said can be said with timing. Timing is a big deal. So you say less, but you say it in better timing and with more influence. There was a scene in The Godfather where he's talking. He's like in some kind of negotiation. It's been a long time, you know. And there's a guy here and he's negotiating and this guy says, yeah, he jumps on the Godfather's voice while he's negotiating. And all the Godfather does is this. Finger raised. And the guy be quiet. Right? That's commanding the room. But he's in a position of power. Okay? To get there, he had to talk. He had to be the godfather. He didn't become the godfather by not knowing how to speak. If you watch the movie, he has the best speech out of everybody. The most influential way of speaking. Then if you watch as his son grows up, um, Al Pacino's uh, character, he changes the way he communicates to his environment. Suddenly he becomes the most influential communicator. When he's having the guy sign a, uh, some kind of contract about, about um, acting, acting in a movie, he says, you know, we're offering you this deal, whatever. And then the guy says, and we hope, uh, and the guy kind of looks at it, there's a pause. And then he says, we hope that also your friends would like to join, whatever. And it's not a request. It's a, I mean, it's not a, a plea. It's a, it's, a, it's a command. It's not a request, it's a command. And so the guy says, it would be my honor, my pleasure, anything from my godfather. And he shakes his hand. You have to learn to communicate to command the room before you learn to not communicate and command the room. Because to ask that question is a cop-out on communication, which is a cop-out on dynamics of relationships, which is a cop-out on so many things on so many levels. Now, if you say, I'm able to communicate and command a room, good, then I can show you. But I'd like to see how you communicate. Then I can show you how to tighten it, okay? All right, everybody, it's called Game or Die. It's 5'10". I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up Bikram Yoga today. I have a goal of meeting Bikram, the person who put it together, and showing him what I can do. Okay, and that's going to happen for sure. Um, but anyways, um, my product comes out on the 15th. It's called Game or Die. You need to buy that to be able to attend the workshop the week after, which is another thing called Game or Die. Game or Die. Um, on the 21st, there's a movie coming out called An Hour to Kill. If you go on Instagram and put An Hour to Kill, I have a part in that movie. It's not too big, but I'm quite a good actor. So because of that, they're really blowing up my part of it. I'm in it. Vince Kelvin's in it. That movie's coming out, I think, on the 21st. I'll be in L.A. for some kind of premiere in that. An Hour to Kill. I'm also on the, on the poster, which is pretty cool. There's a movie coming out, documentary called Natural Born Seducers. If you go on YouTube and put, maybe you put Natural Born Seducers or something, there should be a clip 25 minutes or so about the movie. And I'm in about 10 minutes of this clip. He asked me about Zapar. I channel. There's a whole thing. It's pretty powerful. That, that's a film done. Natural Born Seducers, it's coming out. Um, whatever. Music coming out on the 10th, blah, 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 okay? What you need to do is figure out how you could use what I teach to make your life better and to go then take on the fucking world and come back and report it in. And we all together create a web across the planet of influence and power and strategy of good people who, who you know, band together under certain ideas, which becomes IMC Nation. IMC Nation's first rule is fearless without a master. Okay, that's us. I'm Tanisha, baby. Be the best. Fuck the rest.